Today on Next Generation Leaders, we're going to talk to Pat Cooley, the CEO of Reliance.Net. We'll ask Pat about what it's like to lead a company in the IT services business and how he and his Next Generation Leaders build a reliable, responsive, and affirmative company to meet the needs of the marketplace. Well, Pat, thanks for coming. Tell us a little bit about uh, Reliance.Net. What do you guys do? Who do you do it for? Who do you serve? Um, what's your company all about? So Reliance.Net provides technology and leadership services, mainly to small mid-market customers, and it, really in terms of outsourcing IT, okay. IT project services, and um, uh, pr products. Um, one of the things we do on this show, in this discussion, yep. Pat, is we talk about leadership. So if someone asked you, how do you define leadership, what would, what would be your answer? So I think at its root, it's the ability to envision an outcome and engage people to deliver uh, successful outcomes. And then ultimately, to do it in ways that, that help people feel f more fulfilled, strengthen the team, and ultimately put the, the company in a stronger position. Well, when you think about you know, getting everybody to think about what's the vision of the company, what's the purpose of the company, how do you tie your uh, definition of leadership with the growth of leaders inside your company? So I think everybody on the team needs to be looked at as a leader okay. or a developing leader. So right up front, how do we take their role and tie it to the goals in the business so they understand how it connects? And then ultimately, how do we, um, you know, getting to know them. So I do that in terms of one-on-ones yeah. with my direct reports. And I think that's that time. We normally take them out to lunch. Okay. That's that opportunity to get to know them. You know, what, what builds their confidence? Right. Where do they have some concerns or gaps that need developing? What do their dreams and aspirations look like? Coming out of the one-on-ones, I'm looking for areas of leadership that they can show now. Not putting them officially in some kind of director role, but what are some areas that they can start to de demonstrate and cultivate that leadership in their day-to-day -day activity with the team. So that might be a technical role, it might be sort of an interpersonal role, it might be a customer, what would be an example of sort of areas of leadership that well, you can Well, so in our business, technical is an easy go-to, right? Because okay. we have so many technologies that we need to master yeah. for our clients. So typically, a, a team member, unless they're back office, will definitely have a technical role where they take point. Okay. Um, but on top of that, we're gonna look for something that's a little outside that technical yeah. comfort zone. Um, whether that's leading people, maybe it's leading um, the definition of a new standard for us, something that's a little bigger than just the technology to really get their people skills developed and, and then ultimately something that gets them in front of the client. So I'm thinking that maybe the table stakes for a company like yours is the technology. You gotta have that, that's, that's a given, right? That's right. Does the leadership angle put them over the top for you and whether it's them joining your team or, or getting promoted or being a more significant person on the team, is that a differentiator for you guys? And do you view it that way? Yeah, I mean, the ability to have a voice yeah. and, and really have initiative, that's, that's, it can be expressed inside the technology. But you've got to have a voice to help carry that across our team, make sure it's, our processes are aligning with that. I mean, really, for us to grow successfully, we need to be delivering consistently across our clients. We bring in a lot of small to mid-market customers, and we yeah. help standardize their IT processes. So it's more than just a technical job. Somebody's got to have a view for the client's needs and, and understanding how our team's operating in that. I love that term, uh, you have to have a voice. Is that a, is that a concept you guys have inside your company? I mean, what, what do you mean by that? That's, that's intriguing to me. So back to your question about developing leaders, yeah. I think of five areas, and okay. we've, we've hit on a couple of them. Um, number, number one is role of goals. Okay. Number, number two is, um, is one-on-ones and getting to know them personally. The third is finding that area of leadership that they can start expressing now to pull them into that future. Okay. Four is circles of greatness. And what I mean by that, it can be inside the team, but what are they doing to put themselves connected with people yeah. that are doing what they're doing now, or more importantly, what they want to be doing? Yeah. And how do they sharpen their edge with other people? And then the fifth element is voice. Gotcha. So we're looking for them to express a voice in an ongoing way now in the, in the, in the business. And you know, I appreciate that voice when I hear it, mm -hmm. and I stimulate it and encourage it when I don't. Yeah. But the, the key is to really go behind scenes with them. It's back to that one-on-one -on -one idea and talk to them about what's going on, help them find ways to express their voice, and really get that voice out as early and often in the relationship as possible. That really fits into the next question, which is around culture, right? That because those, yeah, those five elements do sort of fit into a culture of a company. Some companies can embrace that and, and uh, encourage that, as you mentioned. Others probably can squash it. Is there, 
Are there cultural attributes in your company that you can point to or that you can point to where leaders have had an impact on your culture um, that you can share with us? Yeah, so it makes me think of a couple of things. One, voice, right? And uh, I, I go to one of the things we do every day. We do a daily huddle every day at 808. Mm -hmm. That huddle's not led by me. Yeah. It's not led by one of the directors in our organization. It's, it's led by our, our one of our remote employees that works out of New York. Okay. And it gives her daily interaction and voice with the organization. Um, that Just to how'd you pick 808, I love that. Uh, you know, I like yeah. the idea of having an off time yeah, to make it I like memorable, right? right? It's right. not It's not eight o'clock, it's yeah, not seven o'clock. I, like um, I used to have a 737, it wasn't that popular. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, it's been 808 for a couple of years. And um, so Alex calls that to order. And the first thing she does is she picks somebody. She can't see who's in that circle. We're huddled right. up at the front of the office where our dashboards are around a conference phone. Yeah. If you're remote, you dial in for it. And um, she calls somebody randomly to lead that, and then she'll call on the people she knows are remote gotcha. um, to go through it. And we start with a positive focus. And that could be professional or it could be personal, but it's something you feel energy, you feel positive about. Mm -hmm. What it's not is a task. Right. It's not just an achievement. It's right. got to have an emotional attachment of what you're doing. Because then people will change maybe if they have an attachment to that emotion. They get excited about it, right? There's energy. Works. It, it's an ability yeah. for everybody to play off each other really yeah, early. Yeah, yeah. And to be candid, it kind of smokes people out when they're on a bad day, and you yeah. can kind of care for that a little bit. Yeah. Or maybe you see a consistency there, and there's something more you gotta you gotta pay attention to. Yeah. I know that I can get hard charging and going. One day, somebody shared that they had Caps tickets that night. He was a big hockey lover. Yeah. It was the end of the day. I totally forgot about his Caps plans, and I'm walking over to his desk to get him to do a last minute assignment, and I stopped myself right in front of him and said, "Oh, never mind. You have hockey tickets." There you go. And he said, well, why not? what do you need? And then he chose to engage. Okay. Only took him about 15 minutes. He got out on time. Right. But the old me would have just kind of, you know, went right in. Yeah. He, and, you know, maybe not had that awareness. That, it, there's, a, there's a nice connection here between how you think about growing leaders to how you think about culture to the, the next concept we like to talk about is innovation. Because I'm guessing that's part of your energy. You know, you're going to innovate if you have energy. Is, is Not to put words in your mouth, but how do you guys view uh, innovation. You're a technology company. You have to be innovative. You have to do new things to not be sort of yesterday's news. How do you think about innovation and what role do growing leaders fit into that? Yeah. Well, I think in today's world for all of us, innovation, regardless of your business, innovation is critical. I think innovation is the, the bridge, right? The path to success goes over the bridge to innovation. Um, and to get there, you got to start building it ahead of time. It's not something we can do you know, when we get to the challenge, we gotta be thinking about it and weaving it into kind of, as challenging as our daily, weekly, and monthly, um, you know, mission can be, yeah. we've gotta be thinking about how are we investing into that. And I think it does come down to our people. And we really break innovation into three, three, three parts in our business. Um, number one being um, our, our people. Okay. And looking at how our people align with what we're trying to do. Number two, our partners. Because our partners, you know, we're providing technology service such a vast array. So we have to continually get more focused in what, what pro basically partners we're placing bets with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then how does that apply to our customers? How does it serve our clients? How do our people align with that? Yeah. So we always have somebody in our team as a champion yep. of that technology. And then ultimately our clients and getting to know our clients. What is their, what's their future look like? Right. What's their bridge to success look yeah. like? What's their, their innovation that they need to do in their industry? And then understanding how does this technology actually apply to that yeah. and help them succeed. So how, how that, that bridge is a great analogy, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's bridging the, the people to the technology, to the partner, to the customer, and maybe being at that other side of the bridge before your customer even gets there, right? So yeah, your gap, you're, you're bridging that gap, right? And it really is. I mean, that's what our clients come to Got us it. for. We're their virtual CIO. Yeah. They yeah. want us to be constantly out there looking at the big trends and the things, the challenges in their business, the big trends and opportunity yeah. in the market, and then you know making sure we're having bringing a model to bear for them. So all businesses, to stay in business, have to grow, right? You have to have some sort of growth strategy, and uh, you know, if you're sort of doing the same thing you were doing you know, a few years ago, you're, you're not in business anymore. So how do, how do your leaders, your next generation leaders, the people that you rely on, the people you bring into the company, um, what role do they play in the growth of the organization, whether it's um, uh, more customers or doing more with customers or getting a new partner, what role do these folks play in how do you encourage them to get involved in growth, right? 
I think getting that leader mindset across your whole team so they're out there looking. They know where our goals are. They know where we're placing our bets. Okay. They know what customers we're serving. I got you. And then the ability to, 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 to constantly be aware of that, but then to bring that back and talk about it as a group. I mean, one of my favorite quotes is from Coach John Wooden, and it's, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. And he goes on to say, you'll never outperform your inner circle. Okay. So the reality is with the level of innovation happening from a technology perspective, yeah. if all of our people aren't both really good at doing it, but at the same time thinking about the future and what comes next and how that applies, yeah, yeah. and how do we focus that down into something that's actionable. So it really is a team effort. Um, and, and it's impossible to do without you know sure. everybody really being engaged around it. Well, Pat, this was great. I mean, I really enjoyed talking to you about everything you do around your growth, your leadership team, and the way you think about innovation and culture, um, the things you do to help grow next generation leaders. So I want, I want to thank you. Well, I want to thank you, Marty, because you know I really do think it's it's back to show me your friends, I'll show you your future. I was just thinking, well, I'm gonna, you know, I've I've got uh, success written all over me if I'm hanging out with this kind of crowd. Well, it's you know? it's your ongoing coaching and the things you bring to the table, personally and professionally, too. So thank you for that. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks. Yeah. Pat Cooley looks for leaders that take ownership of the project, the process, or the vendor that they're working with. We hope that in Pat's journey and how they've developed next generation leaders in RelianceNet, you can learn something for your project. 